you struck on? Contract. You just kind of slid into the seat. I didn't even you don't even know. You, you guys are just like chit 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 chat 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 chat. We I are, see. I see you guys. We're a little chatty, Kathy. You guys are chatty, man. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Andy Strickland. Any uh, scoop on uh, Rams or stadiums or moving? No, or? but now you're going to see. Now the team won, right? Right. So the big question everyone's asking is: Will more and more people show up to start to support the team? <laughs> That people weren't not showing up because they were winning or losing. Are they going to go 16 and 0? Are this, they going to win the Super? People forget San Diego also won in impressive fashion <laughs> too, right? So there's other teams that are involved, but uh, it is good for. I, I think it was nice to be honest with you, as a football fan, to just watch football and kind of block everything else. It out was a fun game. Uh, no, no question. It was a you fun know? game to watch. It was enjoyable. It was a. It was uh, you know you're up, you're down, you're in, you're out, you turn, you know, but. I, I, I got to call foul on just about everybody in town mm-hmm. because all of a sudden, with, with, with this victory, the Rams are on their way. It was a great defense. It was, you know, one thing goes the wrong way, they lose, and all of a sudden, here we go again. The Rams are the worst. Isaiah Pede fumbled. Yeah. This team's terrible. Well, you forget about that. It's always interesting when you win or lose how you dissect the game. So they gave up a fourth quarter lead. They didn't hang on to that, and of right. course had to go into overtime. They won on a field goal, and and they did fumble the uh, nearly fumbled the game away. Right, 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 right. In the fourth quarter, so um, maybe put the brakes on just a little bit, but still against the two-time defending NFC champion, you find a way to win. It was a good win. More mm-hmm. power. It to was the a good Rams. win, but yeah. going sixteen and zero, yeah. and you know there mm-hmm. were a lot of problems. But and... I will say this: they haven't been two and zero since two thousand and one, and they're going on the road next week to play against a Washington Redskins team that. Is terrible. Uh, they should beat, and they should come back here two and zero to face the Pittsburgh Steelers. So except, that's gonna be, except winning on the road is really tough, no, no matter who you are. No, you're right. You're right. So, There's so much. Hey, the parity in the National Football League is certainly there. Right, and it's tough to win on the road, but they should still beat the Washington Redskins, who just lost a number one wide receiver. They've got quarterback issues, with you know, an, um, among a number of other things. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But I think you have to be encouraged. Let me just say this about the Rams real quick. Yes, this is the first time in years. Uh, where you could say this team is somewhat likable. I mean, their best players are a little bit likable. You couldn't say that in years past. I think what Nick Foles brings to the table is a little more likable than what you saw in years past with Sam Bradford. I think he's a better quarterback. I thought that Whoa. when they made the trade. Well, Sam Bradford's been hurt all these years. It's the first time they've had a real quarterback <laughs> for a while. We get to know him. And, you know, Benny Cunningham's <laughs> a guy who, who um, you know, he's your third-string uh, running back. He obviously right. plays well. They've got some really legit Young talent. Yeah, no, on the it's defensive good. Side it was of the a football. fun game to so, watch. Yeah. yeah. We're going to give Los Angeles a really good football team. Yeah. We're yeah, going to well, give them true. a better football team other than they gave us 20 years ago. Uh, uh, I would probably agree with that if that happens. But you don't think there's – do you think there's any glimmer of hope? See, people are no. – here's the question everyone's asking out there. Does the Rams' record or success on the football field influence no. how this thing plays out? No, because the argument isn't – the Rams aren't being supported here. Mm-hmm. That's not the Rams ownership isn't saying, please support us. If you don't support us, we're going to leave. But they are using that argument to the National Football League saying they aren't getting the support and it doesn't work here. And in part because of lack of support. Well, that's not true at all. The, the support has been overwhelming considering how bad they've been all these years. Corporate support. I'm talking about sponsorship, sweet sales, corporate support. Not just from somebody showing up with a foam finger they- and waving their <laughs> finger around. Oh, I'm talking you about mean, you l- mean like. Legitimate the, support. You mean like the schlep who buys the jerseys, who buys the $9 beer and then pays the $20 to go park? That guy? Well, and again, they didn't have a lot of Who pe- gets, who gets again, padded down to walk every, anywhere he goes in the stadium? That, that, that poor bastard. But I'm saying from a support standpoint, it's not just about the attendance number. I think it goes beyond that. Um, but, that's, but they've never set – well – Anyway, okay. I don't think they, they claim it's not a fit. I asked Kevin Demoff in a text message on Friday. I said, "What will we see that's new at the Dome this year? What would you want to promote?" Oh, if you're a if you're telling the fans who are going to walk into the Dome on Sunday, yeah. And he said, "Hopefully, more wins." <laughs> <laughs> that was it, and he got one. He got one, and they may be two and zero for the first time since two thousand one. We'll uh, they'll, they're going to start selling more tickets when their owner uh, steps up to a microphone and says he's staying here in St. Louis. 
Uh, Hockey Sense, which has turned into sort of everything uh, yes. during the off season. Yeah. Tomorrow night, OB Clark's. Yeah, we're actually going to be at uh, Peak Sport and Spine Rehab next uh, oh. uh, tomorrow. Who's one of our prime sponsors on on uh, sports medicine? So we're going to do a one time uh, event there tomorrow night from seven to nine. Looking forward to that. And of course, Blues training camp officially gets underway. Thursday. That's when the players report. First day on the ice is Thursday. Friday. That's yeah. hard. Yeah. Already? Oh, first day on they the ice. got off the ice. First day on the ago. ice is Friday. They play a preseason game coming up on the 22nd. Wow. Really? When's the yes. first game? Uh, October 9th. Wow. Yeah. Well, except hockey is weird because the hockey finals ended in July. June. Rams, uh, the Blues <laughs> stopped playing in January when they lost in the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> or April. Um, but but you, look at, you look at the difference between the Rams' ownership mm-hmm. versus the Blues' ownership and the Cardinal o- o- ownership. It, it's like night and day. No, it is. Tom Stillman, who was a very shy guy, mm-hmm. stands out in the vestibule greeting fans, yeah. and then you see him walk up to fans and sit down next to them at the game and talk to the fans. You know, that's his personality, and I was with Tom Stillman recently at the Icebreaker event down at Bush Stadium. I couldn't believe the line that he was standing up against that were waiting for pictures and autographs to have taken with Tom Stillman. That's a difference in personality. Uh, same thing with the DeWitts. The DeWitts don't spill personality, but they have a history of winning here. They respect the fans. They treat the fans the right way, and therefore the fans respond because of the history what, no, and the history of winning here in No one's asking the DeWitts to be like um, uh, George Steinbrenner. Mm-hmm. The DeWitts are very kind of shy, kind of a little, uh, not nerdy, but, but shy, I guess, mm-hmm. is a good way of, uh, of putting it. Kind of reserved. They're quiet, mm-hmm. yeah. They're, 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 they're quiet, which is okay. Tom but, Stone was very quiet, too. But you know what? They they um, give back to the community. They've got the cardinal Correct. care. Right. Yeah. They um, understand this, the history of, sa- of St. Louis baseball. They respect mm-hmm. the fans. They respect the city of right. St. Louis. And, right. and when you invite them on the show, they answer the questions. They don't try and, right. you know, they don't say, hey, I put a lot of jack into this town, too. What are mm-hmm. you talking about? Right. right. So, I mean, they do the exact opposite of yeah. what Stan Kroenke does. And um, Stan Kroenke just clearly does not want to be here. He's no. just playing out his contract till he can leave. And I think that's exactly it. He doesn't want to be. He, do, he doesn't want to be here. So what are we doing? Right. So uh, anyway, all right. Um, who's your co-host tomorrow night? Is Jamal Mayers, is, or well, is he still small time? So Jamal here? got hired full time by the Chicago Blackhawks. So congratulations oh, to him. Really? He's going to be doing a lot of community work, kind of an ambassador, doing some hockey clinics, still doing some television there as well. He'll still be living here, and he'll still be joining me on Hockey Sense. Every other week, so twice a month during the course of the hockey season. But he's so, going to—he's small time you the rest of the time, though. No, it's well, he's got another <laughs> job, man. He's gonna, he, it's hard to co-host the show if he's not in town, right? Uh, good for him. He's a good guy. Yeah. Great guy. And uh, he's—they're uh, big supporters of uh, nurses for newborns. All Absolutely. right, tomorrow night. Where are you tomorrow night? Uh, we'll be at Peak Sport and Spine Rehab on Brentwood, just south of Manchester. Starting at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Uh, Andy Strickland, thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right. Uh, Andy Strickland, by the way, his better half is his better half. Your wife's Absolutely. A, your wife's a sweetheart. It's 9 o'clock. <laughs> this is the Big 550 KTRS St. Louis. Eureka. Webster Grove. O'Fallon. And.